The Claisen condensation entails the base promoted union of two esters. It relies upon the reactivity of both the alpha carbon and the carbonyl carbon. And the reaction consists of two steps, treatment with an alkoxide followed by acidic workup. The result is a beta keto ester. The reaction begins with the deprotonation of the alpha carbon by the alkoxide. This generates an ester enolate. Instead of using hydroxide, as in the aldol reaction, the Claisen condensation employs an alkoxide as the base. The reason is that hydroxide will saponify the ester rather than deprotonating the alpha carbon. And a review of this process can be found in the video on nucleophilic acyl substitution of esters. Furthermore, it is important that the alkoxide bears the same R prime group as the carboxyl oxygen of the ester. Otherwise, transesterification will be a complicating factor. And a review of transesterification can also be found in the video on the nucleophilic acyl substitution of esters. The alpha position of an ester has a pKa of approximately 25 while well, alcohols have a pKa value around 15. Therefore, when an alkoxide is used as the base, only a small amount of the ester enolate is formed. The majority of the ester is unaltered. Consequently, once it is formed, the ester enolate will readily encounter an unreacted ester molecule. And when it does, it nucleophilically attacks the carbonyl carbon, displacing pi electrons onto oxygen. A new carbon-carbon sigma bond is formed in the process. When the tetrahedral intermediate collapses, an alkoxide leaving group is displaced. As a result, a beta ketoester is formed, but only transiently. The alpha position of this beta ketoester is much more acidic because it is now activated by two adjacent carbonyls. As a result, its pKa is approximately 10. Therefore, the displaced alkoxide easily removes a proton from this center, yielding an alcohol as well as a new enolate. It is this final deprotonation step that drives the equilibrium toward the products. The enolate of the beta keto ester persists until workup. When acid is added at this stage, protonation yields the beta keto ester in its neutral form. This is the final reaction product. The reaction is called the Claisen condensation because a small molecule, this time an alcohol, is liberated as the two esters unite. It is also worth noting that the Claisen condensation is nothing more than a nucleophilic acyl substitution of an ester. It's just that we are using a new nucleophile in this reaction, and that new nucleophile is an ester enolate. In the following specific example, methylpropionate is treated with methoxide, followed by an aqueous acid workup, to yield a beta keto ester. Notice that although two molecules of methylpropionate do unite to form the product, that stoichiometry is not necessarily written. The reaction begins with the deprotonation of a relatively small number of ester molecules by methoxide. This provides the ester enolate. Notice that if methoxide were to attack the carbonyl carbon, no observable transformation would take place because the alkyl group of methoxide 
matches the alkyl group on the esters carboxyl oxygen. That's why this particular base was chosen, the only observable transformation possible using this base is the one that we want, and that is the formation of the ester enolate. The ester enolate now attacks an unreacted ester molecule, displacing pi electrons onto oxygen in the process. And the tetrahedral intermediate that is formed as a result collapses, displacing methoxide. A beta keto ester is formed, but that beta keto ester is not quite done reacting. The equilibrium is driven by the deprotonation of the beta keto ester by methoxide, and this deprotonation occurs at the most acidic position, that is the one between the two carbonyls. A new enolate results from this process. Notice that unlike the base catalyzed aldol reaction, which we discussed in the preceding video, the Claisen condensation is base promoted. It requires at least one full equivalent of alkoxide. Two methoxide ions are consumed during the reaction, one in forming the ester enolate and another in deprotonating the beta keto ester. However, only one methoxide ion was produced during the mechanism, and that occurred when the tetrahedral intermediate collapsed. Therefore, there is a net consumption of one equivalent of methoxide. During workup with aqueous acid, the enolate of the beta keto ester is protonated to afford the neutral final product. In the preceding video on the aldol reaction, we saw that crossed aldol reactions are possible. Crossed or mixed Claisen condensations are also possible. It is still useful in this case to select one reactant that lacks alpha protons in order to avoid complex product mixtures. In the following example, methyl benzoate and methylpropionate undergo crossed Claisen condensation upon treatment with methoxide. Notice that methylbenzoate possesses no alpha protons, and therefore only methylpropionate will be enolizable. And the reaction begins with the deprotonation of the only enolizable ester, methylpropionate. This forms a single ester enolate. The ester enolate then attacks methyl benzoate's carbonyl carbon so as to yield a tetrahedral intermediate. And the collapse of this intermediate reforms the carbonyl as methoxide is expelled. The reaction is driven by methoxide's subsequent removal of the especially acidic proton between the two carbonyls. Upon workup, the enolate is protonated in aqueous acid to afford the neutral beta keto ester. In the previous video, we saw that aldol reactions can take place intramolecularly to generate cyclic products. And the same is true here. The intramolecular variation of the Claisen condensation is known as the Dieckmann condensation. In the following example, diethylpimolate, a diester, is treated with ethoxide to produce a cyclic beta keto ester through the Dieckmann condensation. The reaction begins with the deprotonation of one of the alpha carbons, which affords an ester enolate that is tethered to an electrophile. 
since the electrophilic carbonyl carbon is a mere six atoms away from the nucleophilic alpha carbon, intramolecular attack ensues. This generates not only a new carbon-carbon sigma bond, but also a six-membered ring. When the tetrahedral intermediate collapses to reinstall the carbonyl, a thoxide is displaced. And this displaced ethoxide ion readily removes the acidic proton that is alpha to both carbonyls, thereby driving the reaction to completion. Workup with aqueous acid serves to restore the alpha proton and yields the final product, a cyclic beta ketoester. In summary, Claisen condensation is the base promoted union of two esters. It is driven by the deprotonation of the beta ketoester product, which possesses the most acidic hydrogen in the system. Acidic workup returns a proton to this center. The crossed Claisen condensation utilizes two different ester substrates. This reaction is most efficient when one ester possesses no alpha protons and cannot, therefore, enolize to become a nucleophile. The intramolecular version of the Claisen condensation is known as the Dieckmann condensation. It too produces beta ketoesters, but since this variation is intramolecular, a ring is also introduced. The preceding was an excerpt from Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, a color-coded approach to arrow pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.